So the Chicago Bears have officially fired offensive coordinator Shane Waldron. And today we're going to talk about what this means for the Bears. I want to watch some of Caleb Williams' tape. And I want to share with you guys why I think being a rookie quarterback is ultimately the bigger issue than the actual offensive coordinator in itself. We'll get into his tape a little bit later on. But I want to just talk about the firing first and foremost. Talk a little bit about Eberflus as well. Uh, so Adam Schefter put it out there this morning that the Bears now officially have announced that offensive coordinator Shane Waldron has been fired. And past game coordinator Thomas Brown has been promoted to offensive coordinator. Uh, so this news obviously dropped earlier today. And uh, it's interesting that Shane Waldron was fired essentially you know, nine games into his very first season as an offensive coordinator with the Bears. Because over the past uh, two seasons, he had a really, really, really good two seasons with Geno Smith as quarterback. Even before that, one year he spent with uh, Russell Wilson. The Seahawks weren't terrible, but... Um, you know, the Seahawks knew they were going to move off of Russell Wilson at that point. And uh, Geno Smith came in in Waldron's second season and had had an MVP caliber season. And Waldron was able to really turn things around for the Seahawks. Remember, the Seahawks were on a couple of uh, bad seasons prior to Waldron coming in and becoming the offense coordinator. And for three years, Waldron did a pretty good job. And Waldron, if you guys don't remember, was with Sean McVay. And everybody always talks about the connections to Sean McVay, to Kyle Shanahan, you know, those two guys have influenced the league more than most other coaches at this point on the offensive side of the football. But the thing with Shane Waldron is he's actually proven that he's a good offensive coordinator. Right? He did it with the Seahawks for a couple of years. And he came over to the to the Chicago Bears. And the Bears look good on offense this season in a couple of games as well. But I understand that they've looked really, really bad at other times. Uh, if you guys don't know this about Thomas Brown, the new offense coordinator, he's also spent time with Sean McVay. In fact, McVay era... Thomas Brown and Shane Waldron crossed paths. I believe it was 2019 and 2020. They're together on the Rams coaching staff for two years. And uh, that's obviously why Shane Waldron brought in Thomas Brown as the pass game coordinator. Now, there is a chance, right? I, I don't want to overlook this. There is a chance Thomas Brown's going to be the next great offensive coordinator, right? There, there is a chance. And uh, uh, let's not overlook that fact, right? Although I still disagree with the Shane Waldron firing, which I'm going to get into a lot more detail here in a second. Uh, there's a chance that Thomas Brown can be a really, really good coach. I want to remind everybody about Ben Johnson's story. If you guys don't know, if you guys have not looked into it, you know, Dan, Dan Campbell became the uh, Detroit Lions head coach in 2021. He started off 0 and 11, right? 0 and 11. Dan Campbell started off with the Detroit Lions. And uh, at that time, uh, it was Anthony Lynn that was the offensive coordinator, 0 and 11. And Dan Campbell says, this is, this is terrible. We're going to make the change. We're going to fire Anthony Lynn. And we're going to essentially make our pass game coordinator. His name was Ben Johnson at the time. No one knew who this guy was. We're going to make Ben Johnson our pass game coordinator. And we're going to turn this guy into our offense coordinator. And they went on to win three of the next six games. Ben Johnson came in the following year. They ended up winning like nine games or something like that. And now Ben Johnson's the hottest name in football, right? But Ben Johnson had a very, very, very similar story to Thomas Brown, who's currently the pass game coordinator of the Browns. Now the offense coordinator. So don't overlook Thomas Brown. Maybe he'll he'll flip a script. Maybe something clicks with the with the Chicago Bears. And maybe things actually end up working out. And maybe Matt Eberflus is the future for the Chicago Bears. Uh, but I do also want to just touch on this a little bit. You know, I say I don't think Shane Waldron should have been fired. And the reason why is because the best, the the the, the very, very best offensive coaches, the very, very best play callers in the NFL essentially run the NFL. Andy Reid, Kyle Shanahan, Ben Johnson, Sean McVay. These are the best teams out there, and they're consistently the best teams. And we've seen the Dolphins kind of fall into that same category. They hired Mike McDaniel. It hasn't worked out this year as much. Obviously, Tua is out for most of the season. But the Dolphins are kind of falling in that same category, and it's the same exact approach. You hire the best offensive coordinator. You hire the best play caller. Now, there are other guys in the NFL like uh, uh, Mike Tomlin who's had success. Bill Belichick's had success. Um, but with those guys specifically, you know, I don't think those are the rules of, of the entire thing. I think they're the exceptions, right? Mike Tom Tomlin has had failing seasons as a Pittsburgh Steelers head coach and the successful seasons he's had like this season, as an example, they've had guys that are great offensive coordinators, like Arthur Smith, for example, was with the Falcons for years as their head coach, because he was a great offensive coordinator prior to that. And Arthur Smith, after getting fired last year from the Falcons, went to the Steelers this year. And the Steelers are having success, a big part of because of Arthur Smith's ability to have success on the offensive side. So although Mike Tomlin does a good job and he's not a play caller, I think the guys that are the best play callers have the most value in the NFL. 
And I think that's kind of tying into why I think Matt Eberfus is probably not the guy for the Chicago Bears. In fact, Shane Waldron's the eighth player that the Chicago Bears have fired uh, since he's been here, right? Eight other people have been fired. Maybe the consistent is not the people that are being fired. Maybe it's maybe it's Matt Eberfus, right? Maybe he's just not a good coach. Now, I understand why he fired Shane Waldron, right? Let's just be honest. There is pressure on Matt Eberfus. This is his last year that he's going to have any sort of opportunity to be the head coach, right? If Matt Eberfus is able to flip the script, right? If Thomas Brown is able to be the best offense coordinator in the NFL, he'll save Matt Eberfus' job, right? If the Bears end up winning out, uh, making the playoffs, Thomas Brown could be the guy that saves Matt Eberfus' job. But if it does not happen, Eberfus is out, right? There's just no way this guy's going to come back next year. And the Bears will obviously go out and they'll pursue guys like Ben Johnson and Bobby Slowick. Uh, they'll go out and try to get some of these 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 play callers, and they'll bring them in. And, and I'm confident Ryan Poles is going to go the offensive coordinator approach and not the defensive coordinator approach the way they took with Matt Eberflus. Uh, defensive guys, to me, will always rely on their offensive coordinators. Uh, Dan, Camp, uh, Dan Quinn's a great example of this as well at the current moment. Uh, Dan Quinn, if you guys remember, back in uh, 2013-ish, took a job with the Atlanta Falcons. It might have been 2012. Uh, he took a job with the Falcons. 2014, they made the Super Bowl, right? I think it was like his second or third year with the Falcons. They make the Super Bowl, and the very next year, his offensive coordinator got poached. That offensive coordinator was Kyle Shanahan. He ended up going to the uh, San Francisco 49ers in 2015. Uh, middle of the season in 2016, Dan Quinn was fired, right? We've seen this happen with multiple guys, right? Dan Campbell got saved because of Ben Johnson. Uh, Matt Eberflus is, is not having success, and it's not like Eberflus doesn't have a good defense. He's a pretty good defensive guy. The thing is, his offense runs the NFL, so if his offense coordinator is not having success, he won't be a coach. Antonio Pierce went through it with Luke Etsy, right? At the moment, Dan Quinn's having success, and that's because of Cliff Kingsbury. But we also know Cliff Kingsbury, you know, ha, you know, when he originally brought in that air raid uh, style of offense to the uh, to the Arizona Cardinals out of college, right? He went to the Cardinals. They drafted Kyler Murray. I think that was his second season, and uh, they knew right away this is a very very good offense, and and it took like a year and a half, two years for the league to adjust to it. And when the tape got out there of the offense, teams adjusted to it. They didn't have the same type of success. And I'm not saying this can happen to Jaden Daniels. And I also understand Bears fans are going to say, if Jaden Daniels is having this much success, why is Caleb Williams not having this much success? The only factor has to be the offensive coordinators. Uh, we'll see what ends up happening in two or three years, right? I do think Caleb Williams is still going to be the best quarterback from this class. I think the coaching just has to be consistent. And uh, I don't think Matt Eberfuss is the guy... I think it was a mistake firing Shane Waldron, but I understand it because Iberflus knows he needs something to flip for him to be able to uh, keep his job. Uh, I don't expect Iberflus to be here next year, but I also want to talk a little bit about Caleb Williams. You know, Caleb Williams right now is four and five to start his rookie year through nine games. He's won four games. He's lost five. I think this past week was the hardest game I watched on tape. Uh, it was one of those games where it just didn't look good, right? Like you can tell, like the offense just didn't click. Uh, there was a lot of pressure on the quarterback. In fact, I think over the last three weeks, there's been a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Um, and it's not like the Bears have a terrible offensive line, but we do have to understand there's different ways to protect quarterbacks. I think this is one of the things why offensive line stats sometimes lie. And I also think this is one of the reasons why sometimes people have to recognize, you know, if a quarterback's getting sacked 15 times and another quarterback gets sacked twice, it doesn't mean one offensive line's better than the other. Like, it could be the difference of having Peyton Manning as your quarterback or a guy like Jimmy Garoppolo, right? Uh, it could be the difference of having Kyle Shanahan as your offensive coordinator or Josh McDaniels, right? Raw stats for offensive linemen don't matter because you can scheme up pressure. Uh, you can scheme up how to block certain guys, right? Uh, I'll give you guys an example. Um, Max Crosby with the, with the Las Vegas Raiders in week one against uh, Joe Wall, right? They went up against each other uh, pretty much 100% of the snaps. Uh, Max Crosby did nothing against Joe Watt. Now, everybody was like, Joe Watt shut down Max Crosby, but I spoke to Max Crosby, and I spoke directly to him about this. And what people don't recognize is Max Crosby was double-teamed, chipped, running backs were influencing him on every single snap. Joe Watt had like maybe four plays where there are true one-on-one -on -one opportunities. And on those one-on-one -on -one opportunities, it was like a one- or three-step drop by the quarterback. So it wasn't like, you know, Max Crosby had a real opportunity to get to the quarterback. 
Herbert had one of his worst games statistically, and it's because they did not try pushing the ball downfield. Instead, they did all the quick game stuff. They took everything underneath. They got the ball out quickly. And, uh, you know, my, my point in saying all that is offensive line stats sometimes don't matter, but the Bears' offensive line is banged up, right? And I think as a, as a general team, the Bears have dealt with some injuries this year. And I think that's kind of impacted them a little bit, but I also think Caleb Williams being a rookie quarterback is by far another huge factor that people are going to overlook. To me, you know, rookie quarterbacks should not come in and just be expected to, to, to win the Super Bowl. I know CJ Stroud has changed the narrative a, a little bit, right? I know Justin Herbert has changed the narrative a little bit. I know everybody wants people, you know, every, everybody wants their rookie quarterbacks to be like those two guys, right? But those guys are not the rule. They're the exceptions. Because for every time we get one of those guys, we get Lamar Jackson, we get Jalen Hurts, we get Josh Allen, we get so many other uh, quarterbacks that come in and, and they just struggle in their first year or two. But then they develop and they get better and they get better and they get better. And I do think with Caleb Owens, that's exactly what we're going to see. And I'll show you guys a couple of examples on tape as to why this guy is struggling right now. Yeah, you guys, check this first play out. This play was actually one of the plays that I saw on, on social media trending. I think someone broke this play down and uh, they paused it right about here. And they said that Shane Waldron is a terrible coach, right? They said, you know, do you throw the ball here or here, you know, or here? Like who's open? Where do you throw the football? The thing is, there's no pressure. The quarterback's in a clean pocket. There is a guy underneath. This is the cover one. So you got the robber defender right there underneath. So you're not going to be able to hit the curl. But to me, you want to take this shot right here if you're Caleb Williams. You want to get the ball out there to DJ Moore. Now, the thing within this play is DJ Moore is wide open, right? If you guys watch the wide receiver at the top here, uh, at the top, he is wide open. I'm going to back this up here. Keep an eye here on DJ Moore. Obviously, the corner does, does uh, make contact downfield. But you throw this pass on time, that's a, that's a catch, right? And the thing is, is I'm not blaming Caleb Williams for this, right? I'm not saying this guy's a bad quarterback, but this is this is a rookie quarterback, right? And you can watch the tape. You can put on so many of these uh, of these games with Caleb Williams, and there's misses, right? There's guys that are open. There's decision making issues with Caleb Williams. But this was a scouting report of Caleb Williams coming out of college. We knew that this guy has to develop. We knew this guy had to learn to play within the structure of an NFL offense. Although these guys have a ton of potentials to get into the NFL, they got to learn to play within structure. And uh, to me, there's been misses on tape with Caleb Williams. Here's another example of it. Third and four as a quarterback, you got to hit this, right? You got a wide open wide receiver, and this is designed open. This is an offensive design, right? You're essentially getting a guy open, and this one misses on third and four. And this is not to take a shot at Caleb Williams at all but and you know, look at the wide receiver at the top and then watch the pass right these are developmental things right timing in the nfl is one of those those things where you got to get better you got to learn how to read defenses and everything's a lot faster it's hard being an nfl quarterback right but these are the things you got to develop at and this is why i don't necessarily agree with the shane waldron firing quarterbacks are going to struggle early on in their careers it's just what it is with williams he's had issues on tape right and again he'll bounce back he'll get better but to fire your offensive coordinator after nine games of a rookie quarterback's very first NFL season, I think is a bad way to start with that quarterback, right? You want this guy to be on a pace where it's consistent, not where it's consistently being turned over. And that's where the Chicago Bears are headed right now, right? Especially if you end up move, moving off of Eberflus at the end of the season. You're now essentially going to have this guy learn a whole new system for the third time, depending on what Thomas Brown implements as he kind of gets in there, right? So... To me, again, not a fan, but I understand why Eberflus wanted to make that decision. This is probably his last opportunity in the NFL, right, this season specifically. So I get it. But again, I don't think Shane Waldron should have been fired. You got a rookie quarterback. You got to develop him. So there you guys have it. You know, Caleb Williams has had issues on tape with getting the ball out. But it doesn't mean that he's going to continue to have those same issues, right? To me, Caleb Williams will bounce back as we kind of go forward. And I think he'll be a really, really good quarterback in, you know, a year or two from this point. Um, but I also do think you got to get that offensive coordinator and play caller right. That's going to be by far the biggest value. Uh, Thomas Brown may be the guy. We'll find out probably within the next couple of weeks. Do note, Thomas Brown is going to be running Shane Waldron's offense, right? And do keep in mind, if it wasn't properly installed from the very, very beginning, is probably not going to run efficiently as we go forward. Although Thomas Brown can make some changes, 
a lot of the verbiage is going to be the same, right? You're not going to change that in the middle of the of the season. Uh, a lot of, you know, the spacing and those type of elements might be very, very similar to what Waldron's kind of been doing. But I think Shane Waldron's at least proven in the past he can install uh, playbooks properly. I think Thomas Brown should be able to have success if he's a good coach. If he's not, Eberfuss will probably be fired at the end of the year anyways. And the Bears can retool and just kind of go into next season with a lot of expectations, right? And I think next year is the year that they should look at, especially when you have a rookie quarterback. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Obviously, this was a talking head video. I don't really do this on this channel. Uh, but I do I do generally enjoy watching the Chicago Bears, right? And I watch them every single week. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing. And I will see you guys next time with another video.